Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, are about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence, which is what this show is all about. My special guest today had a starring role in the iconic movie Karate Kid 2. He reprised his role as Chosen Toguchi on the hit TV series Cobra Kai and is the producer of the absolutely fantastic new movie, The Paper Tigers. He is Yuji Okumoto, and today we are going beyond movies. Hey, Yuji, welcome to the show. How's it, Rusty? Thanks for having me. Oh, uh, Yuji, it's so good to see you. You know, I, I absolutely loved, you know, your movie. I mean, that was such an iconic movie, The Karate Kid 2. And we'll talk about that in a bit. But I know that you were born in L.A. and you grew up in L.A. But how did you first get interested in, in acting? Well, um, I, <laughs> I initially wanted to be a dancer, actually. Um, I did some, you know, break dancing stuff back in the day and, you know, they called it uh, pop locking or whatever, but, um, I just dated myself. Uh, <clears throat> but knowing how short uh, a career, um, a dancer's career can be, I kind of diverted and started taking acting classes in college. And, uh, you know, I wound up at a, a Asian American theater company called East West Players in LA. And that's kind of how I started. And, and on a dare, I um, auditioned for the play, The Flower Drum Song, at a theater in L.A. And uh, you know, that was hilarious. It went terribly wrong, but um, had, had no clue about, uh, you know, keys and how to, how, you know, to sing and the arrange and all that stuff. And so um, when the accompanist asked, well, what key do you want to sing this song in? I said, I don't know, God can you help me with that? Can you, did, what, what key do you think I am? And so she just started playing and I uh, kind of, you know, went along with it and uh, actually got a call back from this uh, audition, which is hilarious. And, um, you know, they, they wanted me to audition for the role of Sammy Wong or Sammy Fong. And uh, he was one of the, the you know, uh, kind of supporting characters. And so, um, you know, I did that. Uh, I don't know why they had me come back. I don't know if it was due to sheer guts on my part going cold like that or or if they felt sorry for me. But either way, unfortunately, I didn't get the role. But um, they did ask me if I wanted to be part of their ensemble cast. And I politely declined and, and said thank you very much. But at that point, I kind of felt this this kinship with with uh, you know the entertainment business and and acting and and so I continue to do these um, s small plays or plays in small theaters and you know I eventually landed a commercial agent and she sent me down the hall to meet with a theatrical agent and um, you know I, I got all this doing the doing this play in in a small theater in North Hollywood. And uh, I played a dying buffalo, if you can believe that. That's what got me an agent, classic. But, um, you know, I, I just look at this, this, uh, this whole life thing is this anything in life, you, you never know what's out there unless you put yourself out there. And, you know, that's the, the, the beauty of, of our, our, our lives is that you, you take those risks, you jump in and you don't know what will happen. But. You never know unless you try. So. Oh, Yuji, I like hearing that, how it all began. And I want to ask you, what kind of impact did somebody like a Bruce Lee have on you? Oh, my God. Uh, he was so iconic, you know, in, in the 70s. I mean, that's what I grew up on is, is those uh, kung fu movies and martial arts movies in the 70s. And um you know, when he kind of exploded onto the screen, I thought, my God, this guy is incredible. Not only does he have the, the martial arts ability, but he has that, that it factor, which is the charisma. 
And and so when you watch his performances, my God, you just can't wait till he comes back on screen because he's uh, he's got that it factor. And and so um, he was such a huge influence, I, I'm sure, on not only my life but a lot of uh, you know Asian Americans out there. You know, I'm sure when we saw him in, you know, a lot of those movies where he did the nunchucks, you know, we, we all picked up nunchucks and started swinging them around and, you know, cracking our, our skull, you know, with the, the sticks and, you know, but I tell you, he was a, he was a huge influence. And, and I think he was one of the reasons why I, I thought, you know what, maybe, you know, I, I can, I can kind of be a, an actor and, 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 you know, maybe, maybe make a difference, maybe influence people and, and say, yeah, we're, we're here and, and give uh, Asian Americans that visibility, because I think that's what we're, we're kind of missing is that, that, uh, you know, visibility in, in the industry. Well, I, I totally agree with you. I, I love Bruce Lee and, and UG, when you got that starring role for Karate Kid 2, how excited were you? Well, I don't know if I was excited about that necessarily or, or more excited about the fact that we're shooting in Hawaii. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I tell you, I was, I was uh, going nuts. I mean, I was a big fan of the first Pride Kid. And, uh, you know, I was a huge fan of, of course, Pat Morita. I thought his story and, and his legacy was um, incredible. I mean, he, he came from, from nothing. And he, you know, suffered a lot as a kid and, and, you know, he, he built his career and, uh, he got to the point to, to, um, kind of fight basically for that role of Mr. Miyagi. Cause initially they, they didn't want him. The producer said, ah, I don't want a comedian to play, you know, this, this character. I want somebody serious, you know, like Toshiro Mifune, you know, or something like that. But, you know, Pat, um, you know, he, he brought it, he delivered and, they basically couldn't deny that fact. And so uh, John Allerton uh, was really a proponent of, of casting uh, Pat Morita. So when um, I got the, the role, man, I was so ecstatic uh, to be able to work with Pat. And, you know, also Ralph Macchio, uh, you know, I, I, you know, was a big fan of The Outsiders, of course. And, um, you know, uh, I, when I first uh, came in to audition for that role, um, I had known the casting director from two other films that I, that she had cast me. In. One was, uh, Aloha Summer, which we shot in Hawaii. And then the other one was a film called Better Off Dead. And so this was my third, um, film that she, uh, was looking to cast me in. And so I went into the room and, um, I'll never forget. She had told me before I, before you go in, because Ralph is a little shorter than you, make sure you kind of slump, slump down a little bit so you're not as so you're not as tall, right? I mean, because you know, at the time I think he was probably like five eight or something, and I was like six feet at the time. And so I went in and uh, you know slouched a little bit. And John Appleton, who's the the director of uh, Karate Kid uh, too, he was looking through his uh, you know a viewfinder thing. Um, uh on his camera and that's kind of how he he did his auditions is like going to the room and he's already on his camera like this and um he looked at me he goes you okay there why why are you slouching you you look like you got a back problem or something i said oh no no i'm just i'm good i'm good so you know uh yeah after that point you know i stood up tall because he said i want this guy to be a lot bigger and menacing towards towards ralph and and so that's um, what I did, and um, I did the audition, and I think I had to meet with the other producers and probably Sony people, and um, I, I got the gig probably after three auditions or something. So, UG, that that uh, iconic fight scene at the end of the movie, how tough was that to film that for you? You know, I think it it comes down to having a good dance partner. And uh, Ralph was just extremely good at choreography. Uh, he was a dancer to begin with. And so um, not, not necessarily a martial artist, but I think when you can kind of deliver um, those moves believably enough, then I think that's, that's the, the big part of it. Because the choreo, man, I mean, you've got a, 
um, you got to know the choreography. And, um, you know, so we avoided, you know, making contact with each other. Uh, we did uh, really well with the fight scenes. And I think it comes down to the chemistry um, that Ralph and I had uh, during the, 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 sh the filming of uh, Karate Kid. Uh, she, he, was, he was very gracious, uh, very giving as an actor. Um, so when we did the rehearsals for the fight scenes, um, you know, he would say, okay, let's, let's try this and try that. And, and, you know, uh, the, the fight choreographer would, would you utilize our strengths and, and use them in the film. So if I had one leg that was stronger throwing one kick than the other, then he would go to that side and same with, with, uh, Ralph too. So it made, uh, the fight scene, um, go a lot easier. So Yuji, it's so cool how they, you know, you reprised your role as chosen Toguchi on the hit TV series now, Cobra Kai. How was it reuniting with Ralph Macchio on Cobra Kai? Uh, it was, it was, it was like um, being with uh, family again. You know, uh, it was uh, um, a, a smooth transition. But like I said before, I mean, the guy is a pro. He's there to do the work. Um, he's, he's, uh, but he, at the same time, he's friendly and open to suggestions. Um, uh, honestly, when I first was approached to do the, the role and reprise the role, uh, the, the writers slash creators had sent me the script and I initially had passed on it because I, I didn't want to play Chosen in, in the way that they wanted him to be played. Um, at that time. So um, my agent went back to them and, and said that, thank you very much, but uh, you're just going to have to pass on this. And they said, well, let, let us talk to him. Let us, let us have a conversation with them because we want him to, you know, play this role and be happy with this role. So they, I lo love the fact that they actually did call me and they, they got on this uh, conference call and uh, all three of the guys were, were pitching the story. And, and I said, that's, that's great, but um, can I give you my input? Um, I don't really want uh, Chosen's legacy to you know, go this way because I think he still has to have that sense of honor, that sense of strength um, in, in order to... Uh, go uh, in this direction because if you have him apologizing from the get-go then he has nowhere to go but if you have him coming in a little hard then the payoff at the end with everything I won't spoil it for people who haven't seen it uh, then the payoff works but if you have him apologizing from the beginning you know then then it weakens his character and I think Chosen has a lot of pride and um, living this character for the past, what, 35 plus years, I think I wanted to show deference to, to this character. And I, I didn't want the audience to kind of feel like, oh, he just did it for a paycheck, you know? So um, getting back to your question about working with uh, the, the folks and reuniting, Tamlin Tomita, who plays Kumiko, my God, that was a joy too. I mean, it felt like we we're both on the set of Karate Kid too. It was such a, a wonderful, warm kind of homecoming. Uh, and, you know, I love Tamlin. She is just one of the sweetest, uh, just toughest, um, just, a, just a wonderful person and a terrific actress. So um, I was totally blessed to be in, in their presence. Uh, Ralph and Tamlin, I mean, they both really brought it and some of their scenes were so incredible, so touching. So I, I was in, you know, I was in heaven. Well, Yuji, I, I'm so happy that the producers of Cobra Kai really listened to your input because I, I absolutely love how everything came together right there in that role. And hopefully they're going to have you back again. And I want to ask you about your, you know, producing your new hit movie, The Paper Tigers, which mm -hmm. I absolutely love. Can you share about some of the challenges you guys had uh, in, in filming and dealing with the movie? 
Yeah, there was, a, there was quite a bit of challenges because when you're dealing with a small budget indie film, uh, you really have to watch your budget. And, um, you know, sometimes you want a certain shot, sometimes you need time for this shot, but you have to be, you know, aware of that, uh, the, the, that that's going to cost money. And, and so it, it was hard because, you know, being an actor, I mean, I want the best for the actors and the performance. I mean, but at the same time, you have to put your producer hat on. And, um, you know, sometimes you, you have to, you know, you know, cut it off a little bit because otherwise it could get out of control. Um, but some of the, the other things, uh, talking about, you know, the, the door is getting, you know, shut in your face when we're trying to pitch this, um, you know, that I was used to because being an actor, you're used to getting doors slammed in your face and the rejection and all that stuff. But I think the worst part was, you know, those doors sometimes were open, but then you get slapped in the face with whitewashing. And I'm thinking, wow, man, you know, here on the one hand, they want help, but then on the other hand, they don't want to help. So, you know, just to give me an example, they, they wanted to help finance uh, the movie, but the, the caveat being they wanted to change the lead actors to white guys. So, you know, they would throw out suggestions like, hey, how about Bruce Willis? And I'm thinking, did you guys read the script? You know, nothing against uh, Bruce Willis. I, I think he's a fine actor, but, you know, that's kind of a tall order for him to play a role that's specifically written for an Asian American character. So, you know, those kind of things were were challenging, but you know, it's like anything. I think if you believe in something, you've got to stick to your guns. Um, and for us, we didn't want to settle. We didn't want to sell out. We wanted to do the movie that we set out to do. And for us, it's it's a big thing to to focus on the uh, POC, um, not uh, giving in to you know, this, this whole whitewashing, uh, we want to go against that. So for us, it was a no brainer to pass on all this and continue moving forward. And granted our journey took a lot longer than maybe some other shows, but at the same time, you know, we wanted to do it our way. Oh, that's so good. And, you know, a few weeks ago, you guys had the premiere in Hawaii and it was so great of Lauren Day, you know, from KHON2 to promote your movie. And how special was it for you and the other actors and the directors to be here watching and interacting with your fans after they watched your movie? Yeah, you know, um, it, it was extremely humbling. I, I, I'm such a... Uh, I think I was born in LA, but my heart is in Hawaii. I, I'm my my grandpa was was uh, born in Hawaii, you know, and our, my ties go back to 1888 when my great grandfather uh, um, moved from Japan to um, Maui and worked the plantation, and then so my grandfather was born uh, on, uh, in Hawaii, and so for me. Uh, being back uh, was so special, and you know we were we were kind of sitting in the in the lobby of of uh, Pro Ridge uh, theaters, and you know we spent the majority of our time there. This was our this was our life because we would do screenings there and then have a Q and A afterwards. So because they kept adding screens because we were doing so well at the theater we ended up staying at the theater doing Q and A's after Q and A's after Q and A's. But, you know, everybody was so jealous initially when we said, Oh yeah, we're going to Hawaii and, and we're going to, you know, be there for, I think it was like four days. And, and they're so jealous of that. But then when you think about it, we were in the theater the whole time, but it's not, you know, how you spend your time, right? It's who you're with. And um, for us, it was so special because um, there's nothing like uh, local audiences, you know, there's nothing like that, that support in, that we got in Hawaii. I mean, it was so incredible. 
Um, so <laughs> incredible. And there was uh, uh, the first screening that we had, I think it was a, a Friday afternoon screening. And there was only maybe a handful uh, at that screening. And, um, you know, there were uh, three elderly women there. And uh, <laughs> they said, um, yeah, we, we really like the movie, but how, how long, how much longer is this going to last, you know? And, uh, you know, for a Q&A. And because they, they said, uh, we, we have a bus to, to catch back to the center. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, I love this. I love these women. But, you know, it, it was they still came out to support. I didn't they didn't know what they were you know going to see, but they just decided, oh, we'll see the paper tigers. And they loved it. This one one of the, the ladies had those little flip phones and she was doing video of the Q&A on her little flip phone. It was awesome. So uh, when you uh, see the kind of support um, that we got out there, uh, you want to go back. Uh, uh, you know, I, I wish we had more movies that we can showcase there because I tell you, there's there's no better love than uh, that Aloha spirit, that Aloha love that you get from from Hawaii. Well, I'm I'm so glad that that so many people in Hawaii had the chance to see your movie and mm -hmm. multiple times as well. And Yuji, I I, I want to ask you about producing versus acting. How how tough is it being a producer? Uh, it's not easy. It's like, uh, it's like owning a restaurant. Uh, you're constantly putting out fires. Your day never seems to end. It goes on and on and on and on. Um, but the difference is, is, um, you know, as an actor, you, your work comes, you know, before the production starts, you do all your homework, your character breakdowns, and then you, you shoot the, the project. But as you're filming, when they call rap, then you just go home. But when, as a producer, when they call rap, that's not when your day ends. I mean, it continues. I mean, you gotta, you gotta prep for the next day, make sure the locations are good, make sure you, you solve all the issues or the problems that, you know, for, for that day and for the next day and for the next day, because you gotta think ahead because, you know, you gotta make sure the locations for the, the following, you know, net, uh, three days are, are going to be all, all good. Um, so it, it's a, a lot more work. Um, you know, it doesn't end with uh, principal photography. It goes on to post-production. Then you got to worry about, you know, the post-production houses and, and locking those down and making sure that they stay on point. Um, it's, it's just selling your film and uh, then the marketing of the film so that's why we do what we do. I mean, we've been traveling uh, from L.A. to Orange County to New York to um, Hawaii to Dallas. Now they're going to uh, we're going to San Jose to uh, Union City. After that, we go to Phoenix. And, you know, so it's like this this touring thing. And, you know, if we were complacent and we just said, oh, heck, we don't want to, have to do all that stuff then who knows where the film would end up. It, it may just kind of go nowhere. And then you're, you know, not doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is making sure that your investors recoup their money. And that's a big thing for, um, I think, you know, us is to make sure that we are responsible. These people supported us. So we want to make sure that they are taken care of. And that's our priority. So um, for us, I mean, we we didn't take a producer fee at all. We just did it because we wanted to 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 put a film out there that people would would want would want to see, want to be proud of, especially for the Asian American community. So um, yeah, we were lucky because we we latched onto a, a company that believed in us. Uh, our distributor is called the Wellgo Entertainment. And they're responsible for um, the whole Itman series. Um, they did Train to Busan, but they have been just fabulous. They, their um, owner uh, happens to be Taiwanese American. And so she could relate to the whole struggle. Um, we got a chance to uh, see their whole operation when we went to Dallas. Uh, it was a true mom and pop operation. 
And, um, but they were so passionate about the film and they stepped up and they've been really, really wonderful. And they've been getting the film out there and um, they've been very supportive. So we couldn't ask for a better group. Um, you know, we, we had a great, great uh, sales agents. Uh, we had wonderful volunteers, our investors, our friends, our Ohana. I mean, you know, nothing in life is handed to you, right? Uh, you have to be proactive and you have to work your butt off. Um, you can't sit around and, and hope and wait for anything to change in this business. And so it's, it's up to us. Uh, to kind of make that change. And, um, you know, we couldn't have done it without our village because it takes a village to get something like this off the ground. That's for sure, Eugene. And in, in my books, I talk a lot about mindset and looking forward to challenges and, and adversities. And I want to ask you about this. Like you mentioned earlier, when you would go to auditions, you would get yeses, you would get noes. How how would your mindset be when you would get those no's um, in, and feel disappointed or rejected? What what would you be thinking about? Yeah, I, I look at the rejection as a challenge. Uh, I've never looked at it uh, anything any other way. Um, life is all about challenges and adversity. And it's up to you as an individual to push through. And I think uh, being blessed with uh, a really good support system, my parents were always very supportive of, of my choices of being an actor. So I think with that, um, it really gave me the, the impetus to really push forward and not quit. Um, I remember one audition in particular that I, was, I, I wasn't there totally. I just was terrible and I fell on, flat on my face. <laughs> And I left the audition with my tail between my legs, feeling sorry for myself. I got my car, about to start it up. And I said, you know what? I'm better than this. So I marched back up to the, the casting office, office and I told the casting director, I said, look, I was off. I admit it, but give me another chance to prove myself. I will deliver. So I went back in, met with the director, and he thought, my God, this guy has got some cojones, man. And so uh, I proceeded to do the audition again, and um, I left the office thinking, well, if, if anything, at least I took that chance. I said, you know, I'm, I'm better than this. I know I can do better. And I took the bull by the horns and went up there and, and said my piece. Because if you don't, then you're always going to have regret. You're going to, God, why did I, you know, so... After I got my car, went back home, and my agent calls me and says, hey, by the way, you booked that job. <laughs> so that just goes to show that, you know, you have to have that tough skin. You have to have that tough mentality. You don't give up. Uh, you persevere. And I think that's what will get you through. Oh, I love hearing that. And Eugene, <laughs> before we wrap, I want to talk to you about one more thing. You own two restaurants in Seattle, Kona Kitchen. Right. And my a bunch of my friends have been there, and they absolutely love your restaurant. Now, right. what is the biggest main reason that your restaurants are successful? Um, I think it comes down to uh, maintaining quality control, uh, putting out a consistent product. Uh, I think having a, a, a great attitude uh, helps tremendously. You know, when you're having a crappy day, you don't, you know, go out to your customers and say, oh, man, this day sucks and blah, blah, blah. You know, nobody wants to hear that. Right. So that's what you got to do is, you know, you, you have to, um, you know, put on that 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 face because, um, you know, it's it's not their problem. Right. So for me, um, you know, we had some really tough lean years at the beginning uh, uh getting uh receipts for 100 150 bucks 200 dollars and you're going yeah you know we had 200 dollars you know but you know back in the day i mean that's all perspective but you have to learn to persevere you never quit because it's going to get better if you you know put in the work it'll pay off and so that's what we did we we had that my wife and i uh the restaurant now we we had that never quit kind of attitude we had to believe in our product and we had to believe in our service 
So we're both very stubborn in that way and, you know, never want to quit. But, you know, you, you just that's what you got to do. And, and so I think a lot of folks in this in this industry tend to kind of give up and quit because you think about the failure rate in the first year, is high. it's got to be over 90 percent. So I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of the mistakes that people make, you know, are probably to build out their restaurants and spend all their money on the build out. And the restaurant looks beautiful, but they have no cushion to for the lean times. And that's what, what we did was made sure that we had a cushion. So um, there, there are so many lessons that I learned uh, from the restaurant that kind of helped me segue into producing. Um, because if I had just done the producing, I, I don't know if I would have been as perseverant, but the restaurant definitely taught me a lot about business and, and how to be, um, you know, a, a good producer. Now, I can see how those there's those common threads there. And, and Yuji, I, I, I got to tell you, it was super great having you on the show today to really highlight your successes in acting and and now as a producer of the Paper Tigers movie and just want to thank you. So thank you Rusty for having me on. I mean, I I I think it's wonderful that you do what you do because um without uh, motivation I, I don't know what people would be doing because you know, we need people like you to inspire. So um hats off to you and thank you very much. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Yuji and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. <laughs>